What's your insight into the autonomic nervous system and how that's important with athletes, both sort of on, you know, either side of the, the spectrum there with the two systems connected to the nervous system? Yeah, so autonomic nervous system, the two main branches are the sympathetic side, right? So stress, and you have your fight, flight, freeze, and then the parasympathetic side, which is more rest and digest. And I think at ultimate, like high level athletics, just like metabolic flexibility is using carbohydrates on one end, fat on the other end, use both ends as far as you can, and then switch back and forth as fast as you can. I think ultimate in terms of athletics, you could argue the same thing for the autonomic nervous system. Can I upregulate and get super, super sympathetic when I absolutely have to for a short period of time? Maybe example, like an Olympic weightlifter or a power lifter doing a 1RM attempt. And can I get as parasympathetic as possible? And can I transition back and forth there through that whole scale? All right. So it's always been fascinating to me if you watch elite level athletes in general, it doesn't really look like they're trying that hard. Right. So if you watch like uh, football, NFL, you watch wide receivers, the ones who are really good, it doesn't look like they're running that fast, but they, they are running <laughs> very fast. They make everything look rather easy. So for elite athletics, you're taking hard things and making them look easy, which should be a clue to most people in the gym, right? They're doing things that are probably not an elite level and making them look hard. So they're kind of doing it the inverse. I remember like some super old tapes of like a, uh, Russian weightlifters, you'd see like these huge guys, especially like the super heavyweights, you know, walk out on stage. This guy like oh, looks like he's gonna take a nap, and the the second he grabs a bar, you see his eyes light up, and it's, you know, clean and jerk, world record, drops the bar, walks off stage like he's gonna go take a nap again, right? So very very parasympathetic, extremely sympathetic when it matters, and then back to being very parasympathetic again. So I think if people are trying to maximize both performance and recovery, being able to switch back and forth between those is going to be super beneficial. And then the last part on that too is that if you're an elite level athlete, you may not want to go all the way to the far end under extreme circumstances. Because as we know, you increase your heart rate, you actually start losing sensation, you become very tunnel vision. So your senses will actually start dropping off too which I think is a lot of reasons having you know, better conditioning, aerobic fitness, whatever word you want to associate with it. I think the transitions are key and trying to you know, go hard when you need to, and then maybe not so much when you don't need to. And being able to modulate that system where I see a lot of people, when, in fact, when I used to go to gyms, eh, they're kind of stuck in this upregulated mode like the whole time. Like they can't seem to downregulate between sets or even when they leave the gym. And I think that's going to start impairing your recovery. And you can monitor this. You can use during the sessions, you can use heart rate as kind of a rough marker. If you want to look at how fast you can recover after a hard session, you can use heart rate recovery. So figure out your max heart rate. Maybe you just did a 500 meter on the rower. Your max heart rate, uh, say 181. Take one or two minutes. There's two different ways. I use the two minute one within two minutes, just sit there and see how low your heart rate comes back down, right? So the faster it can come back down, that parasympathetic reactivation, that's gonna be a pretty good marker, right? And we know that's related to aerobic uh, performance also. On a day by day, you can look at the status of the autonomic nervous system by using heart rate variability. You can do a one-time measurement in the morning and that'll give you the status of your autonomic nervous system. Are you more on the parasympathetic side or are you on more of the sympathetic side? So that way you can look to see maybe my sleep's impacted me. Maybe my nutrition is, uh, maybe it's my training. Maybe I had a harder day training yesterday. So I expect it to be a little bit more sympathetic today. Today's an easy off day. That's good. Ooh, and then it recovered a little bit more. So I'm, you know, good to go the following day again. Well, I really appreciate your deep dive there into the autonomic nervous system and heart rate and recovery yeah it's it's fascinating stuff yeah yeah it is it reminds me of kids sort of like you know how they get all worked up and they're playing and then they're they're napping and then they're going they're going, yeah. they're going and then they're they're down yes it reminds me of a bit is just watching like a three-year-old yeah dogs are pretty good with that too right you see him go crazy chase the ball chase the ball uh oh where'd fido go i was sleeping in the corner <laughs>